Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today's painting is going to be an oil painting. It's going to be a winter sunrise scene that's taken from the Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. And uh, for this painting I have uh, been able to uh, get a very nice photograph from a person who takes very good nature photographs. His name is Ron Coscarosa and he's a nature photographer from Colorado and uh, I will be giving his uh, website at the end of the video but uh, I'd just like to say a word about using other people's photographs when you paint. Um, it's always a good idea to make sure that you're not violating copyright laws and that you contact the photographer if you intend to use one of his photographs for a painting particularly if you're going to put it on the web or if you're going to sell it uh, it's a good idea to contact them. I did that with Ron and he's very graciously allowed me to use this beautiful photo that he's taken of the Grand Tetons uh, in uh, Wyoming and um, so I have his permission to use it for my painting class and I have his permission to put it on YouTube and uh, he's not really charging me anything for it, he just wants me to recognize his website so I will let you know that uh, his website is uh, www. Coscarosa, C-O-S-C-O-R-R-O-S-A dot com. Um, and I will also put it at the end of the video so you can refer to it again. But um, it's a very beautiful photo and I just wanted to paint it, so I just made sure that it was okay. Um, and he's very graciously allowed to uh, let me use it. So uh, with that said, let's uh, talk about the, pa the painting we're going to do. And uh, I have my um, photographs, as, as always, at the top of my... Uh, easel here so, uh, to remind me of what the photograph looks like. I also have done a value map which I will uh, show you uh, to remind me of the values of this painting, how I want to make uh, uh, certain areas dark, certain areas medium value, and certain areas light value. It's always a good idea to look for large shapes in a painting and try to adhere to some value pattern that has nice abstract shapes in it. So that's what I'll do with this. Uh, we're painting today on canvas. Uh, 11 by 14 canvas. I also have it toned with gray gesso to give myself a medium tone value that I can use in uh, engaging my paint values. And uh, also um, I have my sketch on here as you can possibly see. I'll zoom in a little bit and let you see it. Um, and uh, I also have my uh, <clears throat> the the it done in white charcoal pencil as I've done before, just so it shows up well on the gray gesso. For our brushes today, the standard brushes um, we're using the Bob Ross landscape brush, the number three fan brush, the script liner. Uh, we're using the number five painting knife and my trusty number ten filbert, and I also have a number twelve bright that I may use, but uh, I may not use all these brushes, but I may uh, use. Uh, all of them, uh, and I also have the uh, uh, the painting knife, which sometimes I use on the mountains, but not always. Uh, these mountains are going to be in the distance, so they're not going to be very distinct, so I'm probably not going to put a lot of paint on them. Uh, the paints we're using are the standard Bob Ross uh, paints. I'll go over them here very quickly. Again, and I've added a couple paints that I'll talk about in a second. Uh, we're using titanium white, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, midnight black, uh, Van Dyke brown, dark sienna, Lizard Crimson, Sap Green, Cadmium Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Indian Yellow, and Bright Red. I also have on my palette uh, the, the Ultramarine Violet that I put on here very often, but you also see another big blob of uh, white paint here. This is called Underpainting White, and uh, many times with the Bob Ross uh, technique, he uses uh, uh, liquid white, which is white that uh, has been thinned down with a lot of uh, linseed oil or some sort of oil to make it dry very slowly and make it very smooth and the paint uh, um, moves across the canvas very well. Um, underpainting white is one that actually from uh, Windsor Newton uh, and it actually dries uh, faster. So uh, I'm going to use it in this scene because it's a, <clears throat> a nice winter scene. It's got a lot of snow, a lot of beautiful clouds that I want to blend together but I also would like for it to maybe dry a little faster than normal. So. Uh, you'll see me using underpainting white probably in place of the um, liquid white. Oh, so with uh, that said, I think that's all I wanted to say, and uh, let's get going on this painting. I'll uh, do a video check here to make sure I'm zoomed in so you can see the entire canvas. And uh, 
with the sketch ready and the uh, <coughs> paints on the palette, get me some paper towel here and get ready to go. Um, my paints do run a little bit here when I mount them vertically on this glass palette I have, but that's really for your um, use that I can uh, actually overlay the video of the palette separately and uh, put it on top of the video feed and uh, let you see what uh, colors I'm using off the palette. So I'm going to start now with this uh, underpainting white. I'm going to put some in my brush and uh, see how it works. I haven't used underpainting white before, so this is a bit of an experiment for me. Um, and uh, I'm going to pick up some colors here. I want to get some, some red. Sky has a lot of pink and uh, orange and um, some really beautiful colors in it. Uh, so we'll just see what happens here when I put this on. It may not go on as fast as I want it to. Um, I may want to pick up a little bit of the liquid white just to give myself something to, to run. I do have this liquid white here that I can use, so let's put a little bit on there and blend it together and see what happens. I uh, didn't know when I started this if the underpainting white was going to work well enough. It's not going to cover the canvas as fast as uh, liquid white, of course. So I'm going back to my liquid white here. You're observing me reacting to the painting process here real time because it, you never know how some of these paints are going to act, uh, particularly when you haven't used them before. So I'm taking a little bit of a risk here to put this on without having tested it, but hey, we all try to do things to learn how to paint, try new techniques, try new tools, try new methods. <clears throat> so that's what this is all about. But it's going to be a nice soft painting that's got a lot of uh, uh, soft sky in it. And uh, this just helps get the canvas covered quicker, um, this liquid white. Um, it does take a while to dry. Sometimes these paintings take uh, as much as two weeks or more to dry before the liquid white is really all finally dry. But um, just have to be careful with it when you handle it to not uh, not get your fingers in it. Okay, so there I've got some some of this bright red mixed with white. Uh, got some nice pinks going on up here. I hope that's showing up well on the video. I think I have, sometimes have to make these colors darker in real life so they show up in the video the way I want them to. Uh, we're just starting with this little pink set of colors in here, putting a nice pink, uh, laying down some bright red in here. Now I want some of that to be orange, I want some of that to be blue, I want some violets in there, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of my uh, uh, phthalo blue and see if I can put some places in here where I can actually blend it together. A little phthalo blue here. I'm going to pick up some Prussian blue. It's got a little more of a purplish cast to it, so let's see what that does. Not a whole lot different. Um, Maybe even a little bit of black. The black will, when I add some black, it will sort of turn gray on me when I put it over this, this white. And that's sort of the color I want. It turns a little bit gray and even a little bit, uh, shows a little of the blue that's in there, a little of the uh, violet color. I'll even put some violet in here and see what happens. So I'm getting all kinds of colors in the sky now. I'm getting some black that's mixed with the liquid white. I've got some bright red. I've got some uh, my blues. I've got a little phthalo blue, a little Prussian blue. So this sky is a very beautiful sky. Phthalo blue through here. using these uh, sort of X strokes, as you may remember me talking about. Um, I'm mixing paint on the brush. I don't mix a big pile of paint all the time on the, on the palette and try to mix exact colors. This doesn't have to have 
the exactness of maybe a portrait wood or other types of paintings where you want to match an exact color. But we're getting this nice blended, blended look. Pick up some more of this bright red and throw it in in some places. As I come down closer to the horizon, I'm going to add a little more orange in it. So I'll be mixing some, uh, some of my CAD yellow with this red. And um, starting to get a little more orange in the sky here. There we go. So just by a touch of CAD yellow to this red, bright red, you see I'm getting some orange streaks in here. And it actually even turns more yellow as it gets toward the uh, horizon with some white in it. Some underpainting white in there. Underpainting white is a little thicker than I thought it would be. Um, Okay, so we're getting colors that are close to that light yellow at the horizon. So I've got all kinds of colors in this sky here now. I've got the yellows that uh, had yellow. I've got the orange as it moves up. This is a sunrise. So the sun is probably back there behind the Teton Mountain somewhere. And uh, I'm mixing in the violet, I'm mixing in the blues. So a lot of beautiful colors here in this sky. Okay, that's starting to look a little bit the way I want it. Um, spend a little time here with some more reds in here, see if I can get a little more, something a little more striking in here. A little brighter orange in some spots. Usually the sun rises, if you get them at the right time, which Ron managed to do with this particular painting, the, sky is really brilliant. Okay, um, take a little of the paint out of my brush and see if I can get a little more of this pink color. I like that pink color in there, up here. With all this liquid white on the canvas it's easy to uh, get this to blend and that's the reason uh, Bob Ross used that liquid white is because he had these beautiful skies in most of his paintings all right let me see I'll stand back and look at that you always got to step back and look at it does that look like a sunrise yes I think it does or our spots could be just a little little darker maybe um, to indicate the uh, some of those clouds. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of my midnight black and see if I can pop in a few more or a string of clouds in here that are kind of floating across. Don't make them in a straight line. Make them have nice undulation up and down okay that's a little better there might even be a few little stringy ones floating along here somewhere all right um, I think 
that's going to do it for that part of the painting. Okay, clean out my brush here. So all that was done with a brush that was not cleaned at all. I basically went from color to color, mixing on the brush, mixing on the canvas, using the uh, liquid white underpainting and some of the um, underpainting white, which is thicker and will help dry faster. But um, that's all I wanted for that. Okay, I'm going to change brushes, pick up my my uh, filbert here, if I can get a hold of it. All right, um, so I've got my number 10 filbert, and I'm going to start working on this these mountains back here. This is the Grand Teton Mountains, and uh, they are very large when you're up by, next to them, but when you're at a distance away like this, they're you're uh, not very close and they've they, to make the perspective look right to make give it the kind of um, view that makes the, the sky and the foreground sort of the object of the painting you want to make these small even though they're enormous mountains so I'm just pushing up here trying to get a interesting edge um, a little underpainting white, a little black, underpainting white, midnight black give me this sort of a grayish gray color has to be darker than the sky or it's not going to show up so try to make it uh, a value that's similar to the canvas color here These need to have be somewhat angular. They can't be fuzzy like the tops of trees. Got to have some sharp peaks in there. There's uh, some that are over in this area. Picked up a little blue there. Some over here. Okay, Let's see how that's looking here. They actually string, these mountains string all the way across this whole, almost the entire background. Um, you see them popping up in areas over here like this. A little purple, purple in there, maybe uh, that uh, violet. Didn't get a lot of violet yet. Here, let's try this. There we go. I'm kind of covering this part of the canvas with these colors, but they sort of just string out and sort of go to nothing over here. Very blurry at the top. They, these are further away even than the uh, ones in this toward in the center here. Sharp edges, not sharp edges, but somewhat sharp, I guess. Now I'm using this underpainting white. It's kind of coming down, putting on some snow. I want to make these brush strokes go the way the mountain goes. If you don't, you'll be fooling the, little, the viewer.
over here we got some snow these areas a little, little dry brush looks kind of nice in some of these areas as well dry brush is when you don't have a lot of oil in your brush and you have paint and the canvas is dry and you can just kind of skip the brush over it and it leaves this nice marks where you can see the canvas sticking through in some areas or the paint that's underneath but if you keep going back over it you'll eliminate the dry brush which is kind of defeats the purpose so if you want dry brush you gotta hit it get away from it leave it alone stop messing with it okay I'm gonna have trees over this area anyway so I'm gonna kinda of stop on this now and see if we've got this pretty well fine-tuned maybe just a little snow on some of these over here all right I'm actually pulling a little bit of that sky color down on the mountain because the Sun hits some of these mountains and it starts picking up that yellow glow at the top fuzzy some of these are sharp some are fuzzy okay that's the Teton Mountains in the distance. And let's see, we're doing pretty well. All right, now, next stage is to come down and, and uh, put this row of trees. There's a whole lot of trees back here in the, sort of in the middle ground, just above the, what I'm calling the horizon. And, uh, they're pretty much in silhouette and uh, I don't want to make them just black um, so I'm going to use some different colors I'm going to use some of this um, lavender I've got or uh, violet and I'm going to mix a little bit of brown together and see if we can get a color that's a mixture of brown and violet maybe a little of this dark brown a little black in it, even put a little alizarin in there, we'll redden it up a little bit. Um, and just start over here with my filbert with all this paint in it and start putting in trees that sort of have a reddish brown look to them. And I'm pushing up, just pushing up letting these things fall where they will pick up a little darker brown and putting some darker brown colors in here at the bottom sort of at the base where these trees sort of go across it's not dark enough come back i'll put some green on top of that maybe I try a little of my uh, sap green i'm still mixing on the brush here there's a little green. Put some right in here. So these are like uh, evergreen trees off in the distance. I'm going to mix a little Prussian blue with this green to get a darker bluish green because they are kind of far away. This area, the, the water in this painting is called the Snake River. And um, you see these kinds of scenes in many of our national parks and uh, Grand Tetons is a very famous one. So see in here we'll put in some maybe mix up a little of this red and I'm making them a lot lighter than they are in the photograph because it's I don't want just a black line of trees across here so one of the things that uh, photographs can do is distort your your color sense the, the, the hue of the uh, paints because the camera will just turn things black and when you print out the photograph you end up with things that look black but you don't want to paint them that way because if you were out in nature if you were standing in this place where Ron Coscarosa took this photo you'd probably be freezing 
and you probably wouldn't be having a lot of fun painting, but you would see colors like this. You'd see the greens, you'd see the dark blue, you'd see the browns. You wouldn't see black, but that's what the digital cameras pick up because they're basically digitizing what's in front of them. And uh, you're also trying to put something that covers several miles out here in the distance. You're trying to pack it into a 14-inch canvas. And uh, so we're trying to get the expanse and show the, the distance, try to show the uh, depth, but not make it all black. Putting in some browns to mix up the colors here. Every time uh, up close I can see this, I know it's hard to see on the video probably, but each time you put a dark layer over a lighter layer, you add depth to the painting. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do here, to uh, add some depth by layering a dark color over a light one or a light color over a dark one. And uh, again, I'm mixing colors on the brush real time between the brush and the canvas, and I'm just reacting to what I see happening here on the canvas because I do have some liquid white. I have some underpainting white on there. The colors on the canvas are bleeding through and changing what I'm putting on, so I have to react to that. I'll let these fade out into something that's not too distinct. This is another hidden secret that many artists don't capture in their early paintings. In this area over here on the right, on the right and on the left, try to leave a border that's fairly blurry and not too distinct. It's sort of the way the eye sees. If you were to uh, look at the way the eye really sees this view, when you're looking at the focal point, which is this mountain, you don't really see this, these areas on the outside of this painting in detail. However, the photographs we take pick up all those details and it shows them in, in perfect focus. But your eye doesn't really see that way. Your eye sees whatever is in the center, whatever it's focusing on is in the most sharp detail and whatever is on the edges or periphery is blurry. So, in your paintings, if you can do that, you will help really mimic what the eye sees and, and it's a much more pleasing painting, much more representative of what you would be doing if you were painting on location. All right, so now I've got this whole row of trees. The mountain looks fairly small. I could make a couple of those trees maybe a little taller, make them actually rise above the mountains behind them, which will actually help also put that mount the mountains in more perspective, put them in more, put them back deeper into the painting by just making these trees over here stand above. Some trees on the left side here. I'm going to pick up some more of this brown with a little alizarin in it. I already had these kind of going above these mountains over this way, but let me put a one or two in here. And we'll let those sort of right above. Something like that helps make that mountain look smaller. Okay, down here we've got this dark base that's coming in and we're going to start blending in some some white to start showing the snow because we do have a lot of snow, there's a lot of snow covering out here. And they're painting white. If I pick this up and just put in some titanium white or underpainting white, um, I start showing the how the snow is actually connecting into these trees back there in the distance. 
as they are, there's snow back in there. Uh, so we're adding depth here by just lightly feathering the snow at the bottom. All right. Making good progress here. Um, now this snow starts getting sort of a, a violet color to it. The snow is not perfectly white and that's not unusual. I gotta clean this brush out. I've got too many other colors in there finally. I'm gonna get the browns out and the greens out and uh, work with the white, titanium white um, and some of this violet that I have here. Start putting in some of these, this bank over here. We've got a, a lot of snow banks around the side, edge of this river. Over on this side the same way, we got a lot of fairly flat. The angle of the stroke, the brush stroke, if I make the brush stroke go down this way it looks like it's steep. If I make it fairly level it looks like it's uh, you're looking, you're standing almost at uh, ground level where the uh, edge of the bank is. And uh, So we will paint some of it like that. Um, okay, we got a whole row of snow back here that's this lavender color. I'll put a little alizarin in there to see if I can get it just a little redder. I'm going to start bringing these colors are going to hit the snow, the colors in the sky, because the sky is reflecting on the snow. So we'll have some oranges in there, we'll have some, uh, uh, we'll certainly have that in the water when I hit the water, but some of this snow has a little bit of this pink glow on it as well from the sky. That may be a little too much right there, but we'll lighten it up. One thing about oils is you can really lighten them up, you can change them, they're very forgiving. It's a very forgiving medium to paint in because uh, easy to change, easy to modify, and uh, so forth. Um, I want to put in a few, a few of these, uh, some tree trunks in the background, or middle ground, I guess I want to call it, here. Take my rigger, script liner, rigger, some people call them script liner, you may call it a rigger. Put in a few tree trunks back here to sort of highlight these areas. I don't want to forget that. There's a lot of just some around here like this. It helps make the impression that you've got a whole stand of trees back there. In addition to that, we might make a couple of them go above. Get that uh, using thinner. Get this paint. I'm using dark sienna with a little bit of uh, Van Dyke Brown with a lot of thinner and it really runs. It's running down the, the palette. A couple of these go up above like this. Always dead trees hanging around in these forest areas. Uh, enough of that. We also can use our knife and scrape in some white tree trunks that maybe have snow on them. So I will flick in a few, just a few here. This is uh, done an awful lot and it, you don't want it to be overworked. But something like that shows there's other kinds of trees in there with white trunks or maybe they're snow covered. That's good. <clears throat> okay. 
All right, I didn't forget that. Now back to the snow. By just putting white, almost pure white right over this, you can blend it and get some nice highlights um, in this snow area back here that is behind or along the river. Over here we've got try a little bit of this this underpainting white is uh, a different kind of paint. It's, it's thicker than I thought it would be. Um, And it has a pretty strong odor, by the way. Um, most of Bob Ross paints and his thinner are very nearly odor-free. There is an odor with the paints, but not nearly as strong as these uh, Windsor Newton paints. Um, so if you don't like strong painting odors, you may want to stay away from some of this underpainting white. I've got my yellow ochre on my palette here and it's just starting to run all the way down the, the glass. It's probably got more oil in it than any other paint on my palette. See if I can get it to stick up here. I may not even use that yellow ochre. So far I haven't. Um, but I have it in case I need it. Just don't want it to get down and pollute these other colors. Alright, so I'm just painting some snow here. underpainting white. Okay, on this side we've got more. So I'm painting really the bank around this uh, Snake River here. Just letting the brush strokes sort of tell the story. And all this in the foreground is uh, also snow. There's a big section of snow that goes in here like this, and then the rest of that's water that we're going to have some beautiful reflections in. Drop my brush, excuse me. Okay. How are we doing? Let me do a time check here. We are a little over almost 40 minutes, not quite. 35 minutes thereabouts. So probably we just about get this done in another 30 minutes. Some of these paintings go faster than I think. I'm going to put a little shadow area on this bank of snow. Both of these banks of snow here because they're away from the sun have a sort of a, gr a gray or lavender color to them <clears throat> and uh, I'll fine-tune that again later. I've got more work to do there but put on some underpainting white down here. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to pick up my liquid white. That seems to see how much faster that goes on. It just covers so much more canvas <clears throat> than uh, either titanium or underpainting white. It's really good for covering a lot of canvas fast. I'm sure that's why Bob Ross invented it was to help him do his paintings very quickly as his if you've ever watched any of his TV programs uh, he did a, a large painting usually 18 by 24 painting in 26 minutes so he invented big brushes and and uh, stuff like liquid white to uh, help him get the canvas covered very quickly and uh, make trees very quickly with uh, stippling effects. 
um, but they were still very beautiful paintings. And uh, he was probably the, one of the most popular oil painters on TV of the last, I don't know, many years. Okay, so now I've got this covered with at least liquid white. Okay, so now the, uh, the area of the area for the water here, I think I'm going to have to get some, uh, some more liquid white because I need to really cover that area before I start putting reflections on the liquid white even helps that so as you watch I'm talking myself out of using this underpainting white and I'm going to be using more liquid white here if I can get it out on my plate okay And I'm going to get my big brush again because I want to cover that pretty fast. So I basically outlined this, this lake. And all in here is going to be all water. So let's just put this on this way. This is a case where I probably could have done almost the entire painting with liquid white. Now that I have tried underpainting white, and see how slow it goes on. If I used that underpainting white, I'd be two hours or more getting this painting done. And uh, I know YouTube viewers don't want to spend two hours watching me paint, but I'll try to get this as filled in as I can. And uh, all right, now that's all going to be water with reflections. So you can really see <clears throat> the water as if it were a covered icy lake right now. See the banks that I painted in, they have some tone in them. They're not uh, all white, even though it's all snow. Um, because I put a slight value on them, they actually stand out. And uh, you can see see the banks here. All right. That went quickly. Back here, I'm going to put a little more back this way. I think that river goes on and winds back into those trees. I'm trying to see if there's a way to show that. Uh, that'll do for now. Okay, let's see if we can get some interesting color in here. This area on the right has some very dark shadows that are related to the trees back here, which I'm going to use my sap green along with my brown and get a little lizard in here. I get a fairly dark color, brownish with some green in it. And see what I can do for these shadows over here. Maybe you can put a little midnight black to darken it down. But right here at this edge, we've got a lot of stuff coming down here. So just making these vertical streaks tells the viewer this is a reflection. Clean some of that out. That's one kind of reflection. Um, 
over on this other side, we're going to have some of these oranges. I'm going to get me some more cad yellow and uh, bright red. I've wiped out my brush so I don't have that brown and colors in there, but over in here we've got some colors that are reflecting the sky. And because I've got that liquid white underneath there, you can see the it, it uh, thins out the paint quite a bit. And uh, picking up a little of my white, uh, I'm using this underpainting white simply because I want to use some of it up. But I'll put some more yellow in here. Here is darker. Let's keep this orange going down this way. Yeah, pick up some alizarin. I want some of this alizarin color in there in some spots. Kind of like painting the sky all over. I'm going to put. Uh, you have to restate some of that. There's reflections there, but. Okay, that was very quick. Pick up some violet. Let's see if I can get enough of this in my brush to start putting in some start seeing these vertical streaks. Telling you this is all water or ice or something. a bit of the reflection and it looks like water. The vertical streaks are what tell you that that's water. That's the optical illusion that you're getting from those uh, strokes, those brush strokes. And uh, I need to darken it up in some other areas. Now that I've got so much of that covered, I think I'm going to maybe step back to my Filbert brush and use a little bit narrower strokes and see if I can get a little darker in some of these areas. Um, there is a lot of dark in this painting and because as I said those uh, trees are all in silhouette they're really they show up black on the camera Um, over here I've got a number of things I want to bring out. Here we've got some that's got a little brown in it. I might as well use some of that brown if I can. Something like that. Um, we've got these banks we've got to paint under. There's a, a number of dark areas under here that make that stand out. It actually looks like there's, you can see the, some of the dirt that's uh, underneath that snow. There's also some reflections from that. All these have little reflections. Something like that. Um, okay. Um, maybe we get a little bit of uh, 
lavender across this area here that I want to show. It's sort of reflecting the sky up there. So I'm kind of like painting the sky again here. And add some blue in there. All right, I want to reflect that sky. Put a little blue over here for harmony. Okay. Let's see now, how many areas do I have in the back that need some more black or brown? Back here, I need to make sure these banks are. You can see that dark. There and here. Back in here, there's a little bit of a bank. This comes out like this, has little reflections. Okay. Mm. So it's starting to get the look of it. It's, uh, Really water, water with snow all around it with some beautiful reflections. That's the, that's the plan. Take my big brush now. I got it clean and dried out. And uh, I'm going to start trying to blur these now just very lightly, horizontal strokes. Very lightly. Make sure they're horizontal. You don't want them to be a funny angle. I'm drying the brush after each stroke. I make a stroke, dry the brush, clean that out so I don't pick up any dark colors and carry them back into these light areas. needs to be blurred a little bit. A few more vertical streaks will help tie that together. A few things across like this. And here needs to be blurred a little bit. All right, I'm really fooling your eye now. Over here we've got to have some top of this bank has to stand out so we know that there's snow in the foreground. So I'm just doing that with this uh, lavender color, letting it mix with the uh, liquid white, and uh, we're getting these nice, nice. See the value difference there makes it show that they. I do have an edge on this snow, otherwise you can't tell the snow from the water. Like that. Something like that. And that snow actually has a pink reflection to it, so I'm going to get me some a bunch of titanium white here and pick up just a little of my bright red. Get myself a, <laughs> it's a lot of bright red. Bright red really is very strong, very potent. Maybe even a little liquid white to help thin that down a little bit. It's really too strong. Um, the liquid white also helps paint go on top of paint. So when I've got a lot of paint on the canvas here, if I want to make sure my next layer will go down, I put liquid white in it and it uh, very softly here, very softly, just hitting this. Just enough to show that we've got some pink sky reflecting. Over here, same thing. They all have a little pink, pink tops on them almost. It's all from the sun, sunrise hitting. So I've got the snow that has pink in it. I've got that violet color in there that's sort of toned down, and I've got some brown for shadows. Um, now, step back and look at that. Does that look like snow in the foreground? 
Pretty close. Um, I might actually put a little more violet in there and just see. I want to make sure that I have a clear distinction here between where it's snow and what's water along here. Okay, something like that. Uh, there are actually a number of things floating. There's some uh, branches and that sort of thing, reeds and weeds sticking up out of the water. Let's see if I can simulate some of those. I'm going to get uh, some liquid white, get some thinner, make it really runny and pick up some of this brownish color here I have, dark brown. Has to be darker than the uh, surrounding water, which this will be. So I've got my script liner, it's got liquid white in it and thinner to make it somewhat thick, but it's still thin down compared to what's on the canvas. Roll the, roll the brush and see if we can get in some of these uh, little uh, know, either blue blocks of ice or something out here that uh, sort of frozen. Maybe they're little globs of dirt or something out here. Get my ass more dark and sort of make a Something like that, and when you do that, you need to bring the reflection down as well. So it tells the story. Things sitting out here that have pick up a little of this purple down here. Maybe that's going to help tie it back into the bank here. Okay, little details. There's a couple details here. There's a another type of uh, thing here in the water. Sort of sticks up. It's got some grasses in it. A little bit over here, even. Not a lot of this, but just enough to break up this big expanse of water. Um, pick up a, enough of this dark to uh, give us some uh, more sticks and weeds or whatever they are sticking up over here. Kind of this way. There's a few that go up this way. And they come down here as well. So if I weren't putting in that, that little reflection down here. You might not know what those were. I was painting it backwards. Okay, I noticed my reflections over here need to be darker, it looks like. There's a lot of put some more bank under here that's darker. Something like this. There's actually a whole set of dark, now that I look at the painting, I'm not trying to copy this painting exactly, but I want to have enough in there that shows interest and somewhere to look at it, they'd say, oh, I know where that is. Right in here there's some, just some things growing up out here like that. These things kind of show up in a lot of other places. Some have some orange in them over here. Let's put a few sticking up. I'm just using this bristle, this uh, filbert again, uh, with some brown in it. Picked up a little of this reddish orange 
and just flicking in some vertical streaks and letting the bristles do the painting. Something like that. There's a little dark shadow over here that sort of shows there's a break in that. Get my other rigger here with some dark paint and accentuate this bank back here a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> and you could spend a lot of time on this if you wanted. Something like that. Let me step back and look and see if I'm getting a little more interest in there. Yeah. Okay, I think I could probably have just a few more shadows over here to sort of distinguish these snow planes. There's one here that goes down like that. Tie it into the shadows. All right. Um, these things in the middle look like they're pretty good. I don't want to mess with them too much. Reflection, however, should have just a little bit of a blurriness to it. Not much, just enough to say that's a reflection and not a weed growing upside down. Don't want to let your weeds grow upside down. Touch the bottom of these. Make sure that it's the soft edges there that makes those connect to the ground. Um, if you don't do that, you can't tell. They look like they've been kind of glued on. And one more little violet area here. Let's put a little top on this that sort of has a... There we go. All right. Stop. 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 Tell myself to stop. Okay. Well, I hope you like this painting. I'm going to zoom in and let you see a few of the details um, up close. And uh, with that, I think I'm going to uh, say that's it for today. And uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And uh, this painting will be done in our uh, December 18th oil painting class. And, uh, so for, and if you're scheduled for that class, I look forward to painting this painting with you. And until I see you again, uh, thanks for watching. So long.